guys and welcome to the session for today. It's my pleasure to be a moderator for this session. Let me start by introducing myself. I'm Fatima Dirani from Lebanon. I have done Masters in Production Enhancement from St. Petersburg Mining University, Russia. Today we have a very interesting lecture on visual data analysis. The instructor who is joining us today is Dr. Yasser Ishaib, a very high esteemed and skillful professor. Before proceeding to the session, I want to give some important tips, so please listen carefully. For your questions, use the Q&A section. Avoid chats while attending the webinar as it can divert your attention from the lecture. And feel free to ask anything related to the topic. I would like to welcome our respected speaker for today, Dr. Yasser Shaib. Dr. Yasser Shaib graduated from Cairo University in 1990 with a degree in mining engineering and got his PhD from Nancy School of Mines in France. The teaching and research activities of Dr. Yasser Shaib mainly focuses on uh, rock mechanics, data analysis, uh, risk assessment, and project management. Dr. Yasser Shaib has a passion of, for knowledge dissemination in desperate fields of sciences, and currently he is a professor of engineering at the American University in Cairo. Let's warmly welcome our honorable speaker, Dr. Yasser Shaib. Please continue. The session is over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Fatima, for, uh, for this uh, introduction. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending this um, third session on uh, quantitative data analysis. Um, today, we're, go we're going to, to work a little bit more in a practical terms. I will not have a, a proper presentation, like a PowerPoint presentation to, to show you today. But I thought that maybe since this course is about data analysis, so let's do some data analysis. Let's do something practical. And I will walk you through some of the tools that I use every day um, for my work, actually. Well, um, since most of you are from uh, petroleum engineering background or petroleum and earth sciences, uh, I would say, background, I thought about bringing some of the databases that I used to work with and show you maybe the problems that we have in the data. Remember last time we spoke about data preparation, we spoke about data visualization, we spoke about uh, different uh, aspects. So today, maybe we can speak about how to deal with real data that, 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 that we have. Uh, the data that I'm, that I'm presenting here uh, in front of you is real data from a real field. And uh, I have to confess that since I'm not a, a petroleum engineering, uh, a petroleum engineer, and I don't have a petroleum engineering background, so maybe some of the uh, variables that we have here, or some of the parameters that we have here, I don't know them. And maybe you know them better than I do. But I will walk you through those data from a, a data, data analysis uh, perspective. And of course, um, as I also mentioned last time in the last uh, uh, webinar or lecture, if you will go online and type something like data for petroleum uh, engineering or data for hydrologic fracturing or data for water injection in petroleum engineering or whatever and or maybe in your school you will you will get your you will get you will put your hands on some of the data that 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 uh, some of the researchers are working on and all of this is of course uh, permitted and you can you can look at it actually um, i will share with you my uh, my whole uh, desktop because i'm opening a lot of uh, a lot of files and um, I want you to show, I want you to see those, uh, th those files. So yes, I'll share my desktop. Okay, this is my desktop. So this is the data file, for example. And uh, as we spoke yesterday, as we spoke last time, uh, this is what I will call the data matrix. And the data matrix, as we spoke last time, is composed of uh, parameters. We call them variables. Those are on the columns. And uh, 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 lines, lines of data what we call them cases or what we call them uh, individuals, whatever, whatever the case is. And then the data, the real data is, is, is put here. And usually this data, I mean, this data matrix, the number of uh, columns is more than the number of, uh, of rows. I don't know if this is applicable in this, in this case or not. Probably not because we have here until AM, which is like yeah, maybe 35 variables. And we have here only uh, 33 or sorry, 31 
um, individuals. But anyway, this is just to show you the, 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 the data, and then we can look into the, 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 the titles of the, um, of, the, uh, of, of the variables. And um, obviously here, uh, O slash G could mean oil or gas. So uh, there is a code here. There is something, a variable called drain area. There is a, a variable called drainage radius, casing diameter, well, uh, well bore radius, permeability height, or uh, draining volume, for perm, whatever. I mean, names for those, uh, these variables. And then you have here um, the, um, the units. So this is with acre. This is uh, foot square. This is inch, foot, foot, foot cubic, or foot cubic feet. And whatever this is, uh, feet, uh, foot per uh, per um, square root of, uh, of of a minute, and you have the numbers here, and even the numbers, even the data itself is variable. It's very much variable in in, in display. So here you have uh, a number that is uh, four characters behind the the, the, the comma. Here you have um, um, a number. Here you have a scientific number, one point eight seven. Uh, times 10, uh, uh, I mean, uh, with with eight uh, with eight uh, zeros after the um, after the 10, and then here you have 51, 29, and seven, and, and and so on. And remember, last time we spoke about uh, the types of, of 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 data, the types of variables that that we have. We spoke about having quantitative variables and qualitative variables. And in quantitative variables, we had uh, continuous variables, which is, I would imagine that it could be this one, like uh, drainage radius could be anything. I would imagine that this is a continuous variable. It could be 1097.216663 or 1147.70 something. Then you have uh, discrete data, which is, it could not be divided into, uh, into two, and I would imagine here something like uh, this one. So you have here 200 feet, 50 feet, 55, 51, 35. There is nothing like 35.5 or 35.6 or, 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 or so on and so forth. Then you have also here in this data a qualitative variable, which is AGIP1, AGIP2, BP1, BP2, BP3. Probably this is the name of the, of the field. So it's a qualitative variable anyway. And then you have also some missing data. We spoke about missing data last time. So this is not available, not available, not available, not available. And not available does not mean that uh, it's a bad thing or a good thing. It means that maybe we forgot to put the number here. Maybe the, the sensor that was uh, that is capturing the data was in a state of failure here. So we didn't, uh, we didn't have anything, but we don't know. I mean, I, I actually don't know for for this one, but anyway, this is the kind of data that that, that, that we have. Let me uh, show you another um, another file that, that I have here, and I have here um, a file called DeepStar. I think it's the name of the, of the company that we were working with at that time. And you have here um, um, uh, a sheet called Field, sheet called Reservoir, sheet, uh, uh, sheet called Well, and in every one of them there is also. Uh, Different types of data that you can that you can look at: uh, lease, well, first production, last production. This is obviously a date. This is also a date. Cumulative oil, cumulative gas, PI. I don't know what PI is. Peak oil ratio, peak gas ratio, peak equivalent uh, ratio, uh, date peak, drain area, oil EOR, gas EOR. I don't know what's that. Equivalent EOR. Maybe it's something that is in petroleum engineering. And then you have here field name, and you have the names of the fields, and you have here, uh, yeah, 101 uh, uh, cases. And from A to T, you can count the number of the variables that, that, that we have. So this is uh, uh, another file. Um, a third file that I want to show you, just as an example, I'm, I'm just showing those, those files as, as examples of, of types of data that we, that we come across uh, when we work in data analysis. So this is a third file, and then you have here a date, well, pro chance, I don't know what's, uh, pro change, I don't know what's this, OIW, no zeros, OIW, 30A, field, depth, pres uh, preservoir, uh, PFRAC, length, days, hours, choke, and so on and so forth. I see I'm 
I'm just looking into the data and obviously there's a lot of missing data here in this file than in, than in the others. Uh, I don't know why. I mean, I'm, I'm just making it smaller so we can see the, the portions of missing data. So here we have a big portion of missing data. Here we have some missing data here and there, but then everything else is uh, maybe complete. And this is uh, a bigger, a bigger uh, number of individuals. I think we have, yeah, we have here, yeah, I thought it's the order of thousands. Uh, yeah, we have here something like 17,000 uh, data points. Let me look at it again. Uh, yes. No, I'm sorry. We have like 15,000 15, uh, 15, uh, data points. And we have a number of variables that goes from A to AL uh, in Excel that this means something like, yeah, maybe 40 variables or so. So that's another file. And uh, the, last, uh, the last file that I have here is, uh, is this one. And in this one, it's a bit uh, special because here they have like uh, different wells and for every well, there is a different sheet. So um, you have the same data, the same type of data here, slurry flow rate, open concentration, treating pressure, bottom hole pressure, bottom hole temperature, static string pressure. And this is for CHEV 3MI, CHEV 4MI M1, and so on and so forth. Of course, from the names of many of the wells, you can imagine that this is maybe Chevron, but this is like, the year 1999, the year 2000. This is very old data that, that, that I have, so it's, it's irrelevant today for, for, for anything. But anyway, I mean, when they gave it to us, when, they, when, the, when the person gave, those, they gave the, this data to us, he gave it to us in this, in this format. So he had different uh, uh, sheets. And uh, now the first question that we may ask ourselves when we start uh, preparing the data for the, uh, for the analysis and remember, I spoke uh, a little bit about the data preparation the last time, and I said that it, take, it takes something like 60 to 80 percent of your time of analysis to do the, pre to do the preparation alone. And um, so one of the questions that I will ask myself, do I need to work on every sheet individually, or will I put everything in one sheet, in one big sheet that will contain everything about all the wells? Well, it's, uh, I mean, it's all... Uh, uh, I mean, all, all of those are, are possible. If I have here 2,500 uh, data points, and here in this sheet I have, uh, I think it would be 2,634 uh, data points, then if I will combine all of those data of all of those uh, uh, wells together, then I will have a, a sheet that is like 10,000 or 20,000 rows or data points that are, that, that are in here. It is possible that, that, that you work on that, or it is possible also that you choose that I would like to work on this well alone, and then I would like to work on this alone, and, and, and so on. But I will try to focus uh, today on the data preparation, and I will actually use the example. Um, yeah, this is the, the last uh, uh, data that I had, and it's uh, historical, uh, historical water injection, if I, if I remember well. Yeah, hydrostatic head, friction pressure, estimated BHP, reservoir pressure, and cumulative injection and cumulative uh, pressure. So this is the data about water injection, for, for, for instance. Um, I will go to the data on, uh, I think it was Deep Star. Yes, this, uh, this data point, that is something like uh, 102 uh, data points. And let's try to, uh, to work with this. So suppose for, 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 for the moment that I would like to, to know, uh, obviously I have here field names. So I have one, two, three, four, uh, five, six. I mean, I mean, I have something like six or seven field names that I have here in, 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 in this, um, in, in, in this sheet. Now, uh, suppose that my objective or what I want to do is like, I would like to compare the data that is in field bull uh, winkel to the uh, data that is in the field lobster. How can I, uh, uh, how can I do that? 
and um, let's say that I would like to compare uh, the um, the cumulative the cumulative oil that I will get from this field to the cumulative oil that I will get from uh, from lobster. So, uh, if I would like to do this in in, in Excel, uh, it is possible, definitely. But sometimes you need a tool that is more uh, how to say, uh, more uh, specialized in counting, more specialized in statistics than, uh, than, than simply Excel. Um, in Excel, you can maybe uh, use the function, I mean, I'll put here an answer. You can maybe use the function that's called if s. And for those who, who doesn't know if s, it's, it's that you are, asking, uh, uh, you are asking Excel to reason, to give you an answer about um, a special condition. So you will give it um, a logical test, as it's written here, and then the value of this logical test is true, and the value of if this logical test is, uh, is false. And uh, the difference between if and if s in Excel is that you can put here multiple, uh, uh, can you multiple, uh, multiple choices, like uh, um, I would like to make this uh, test on two or three or four uh, categories, not only uh, one condition. Sorry, uh, two or three or four conditions, not only uh, one condition. Um, in Excel also, we have a, another, another function called count f, count if. So I can say um, count if, and I can say here, and uh, I have to give it a criteria. Um, I can ask him, uh, uh, count the number of, uh, um, of, uh, of rows where you have uh, the field name called uh, bullwinkel or lobster or whatever. There is also uh, another function called count if is with an S, which means that you can count with different uh, conditions, not only one condition, not only one, uh, one, one if. I mean, those are tools that, that exist in Excel. But uh, suppose that I would like to draw uh, two, uh, two variables against each other. Um, I will go, for example, I would like to, to draw cumulative oil against uh, cumulative gas, just to show for one reason or another that I would like to draw this. In Excel, it's very easy that I would say um, insert, and then I would say here, I will go here to this one, to this chart, which is called XY scatter. And I will tell him, well, this is the, the kind of scatter plot that I would like to, uh, to draw. And here he, he has chosen actually um, uh, a specific uh, type of data to, to draw it. I will just erase this one. I don't like this one. And I will choose my, uh, my, my data variable. So I would like to draw uh, a scatter plot with those two, uh, two variables alone. And here I will go to insert again and then this one, and this is it. This is uh, cumulative gas against cumulative oil, and uh, those are the points. And, uh, well, when you draw this on, on, uh, on a line, you have some types of information. Um, I would say that, generally speaking, uh, when the cumulative, because uh, it's, it's the cumulative oil on the x-axis, and it's the cumulative gas on the y-axis. So usually, I would say, generally speaking, when the cumulative uh, oil increases, the cumulative gas increases. There is a correlation here. There is, I mean, I can draw even a line here. And you can ask Excel actually to draw a trend line, what we call a trend line for this, uh, for this data. Nevertheless, you have something here, yeah, which, uh, which I would call an outlier, as, as, as we spoke about outliers last time. This is a, a data point where you have 18 uh, uh, cumulative oil, while everything else is like 14 and less. And then uh, the cumulative gas is like 140, while everything else in cumulative gas is like 60 or maybe less. And of course, the first question that we ask uh, um, ourselves is, uh, is this data uh, erroneous? I mean, is it a mistake? Is this point a mistaken point? I mean, does it exist 142.9? Uh, uh, does this exist really? Or it's, uh, it's an outlier? So first, way to treat an outlier is to ask the question, is it really an outlier or it's just uh, um, a typo? Maybe the person who's typing the, the, the data typed 142.9 instead of typing 14.29, for example. It could happen. 
or 1.8, uh, sorry, or 18.6 instead of uh, 1.8. It could happen as well. But once we are sure that this data is, is real, this point is real, we start asking the question, what happened in this, in, in, in this point? And in Excel, actually, we have, we have a problem because we need to know where is this uh, point. And we don't have any, um, any way or maybe maybe an advanced Excel, we can have that. But we don't have any specific way to tell us where is this point, which one, which point is this point. So we have to go and to find this data point where we have a cumulative gas of 140. So I can do this by uh, maybe uh, going here and doing a filter on the data. Um, I have to this. Sorry. Uh, so yes. I will filter the data and I will tell, uh, let's sort this uh, cumulative gas, gas descending. So the 142 appears here. So this is the point of the 142.9. And then I will start focusing on this point and start analyzing it uh, a bit by bit. So why is it 142.9? Why is this point very special? It's, is it, uh, it's, an, it's in, a, uh, in a field called Ram Powell. Nevertheless, this field, this specifically Ram Powell field has other points where the data is normal or I would say logic or I would say uh, within the, the, usual, uh, the usual numbers. So this is a way to, to start to look into the data and to, and to, and to prepare the data and to get to be aware of, 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 of the data. Actually, if I would like to see the distribution of the, remember we spoke last time about the, 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 the statistical distribution of, 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 of the data. And um, I actually asked you to go online and to look into uh, different distributions of the data. Here we have, if I would like to see the cumulative oil uh, distribution, this variable, how, how is it distributed uh, starting from zero, ending by 20, for example. I would like to draw a histogram for this, uh, for, for this data. How can I do this? In Excel, it is possible, but it is still very, very, uh, very difficult to be done. I mean, it takes a lot of, a lot of time. It takes a lot of, uh, a lot of effort to, uh, to do this. For that, I would, I would really take you to, uh, to, to another, another tool that I asked you actually in the first lecture to, to look at which is called um, R and R Studio. And in the world that we are living in today, uh, let me open up a web browser. And I'll show you how to find it again. Yes, so this is Safari. It's like uh, any, uh, any other thing. And I will type here R, only the letter R. And uh, I'll search for it. And here it. It, it brings me back, the first link that it brings me back, the R project for statistical computing. I'll click here, and it will take me to um, this uh, page, which says the R project for statistical computing, and you can read about uh, R. And R is actually a tool that does a lot of statistical analysis. And the advantage, as mentioned before, is that R is completely free. It's, com it's, a, it's an openware. So it's a free software environment that anybody can use, anybody can download, and you can download it on your computer, you can run it on your computer, you have no problem doing this. Here I, I go to the usual um, different servers that I have the, that have it on it, and I have here download R for Linux, download R for Mac OS, download R for Windows. You can also download it for other platforms if you want afterwards, but I would resume that most of us in this world today, we are really concerned with those three uh, platforms, Linux, Mac, like myself, or Windows, like many, uh, many other. You just click here, it will download the, the, the software to your computer, you can uh, download it and install it and start uh, running it. But just before running it, because R as a software, I can, um, I can run it for you, I can show R uh, running. Yes, there it is. And um, it's, it's, I mean, you need to know a lot of scripts in order to work with R. So this is why um, a lot of people around the world have invented a lot of uh, geographical interface for, uh, for, for that too. And the one that I like, I mean, there's definitely a lot of, uh, a lot of environments for, for R. The one that I like is called R Studio. So R Studio, 
again in the search engine. And here it goes, RStudio, it's an open source uh, uh, software as well. And you can download it also for free and you can use it for free. Uh, uh, yes, RStudio desktop, it's here. And then uh, download RStudio desktop, it's, as I said, before it's free you just have to download it and choose what what you want of course there are different other versions that are not free that are uh, paid for but those are for maybe for professional use for commercial license like 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 it's written here but for us for the uh, academic uh, usage if you click on download you will also be directed to uh, r studio for mac or r studio for uh, for Windows or for Ubuntu or for, I think Linux would be uh, somewhere here, Fedora and, and, and so on. Anyway, please go on online, download R, download R Studio and let's run it and let's see how does it uh, look like. This is R Studio when you open it. And here you have four uh, smaller windows. This is the window where you put, where you input your, your, your data. This is the window, which we call the console, which you will get results of your, uh, of, your, of your questions. This is the window on the top right, where you have the environment that you are working with. When you, when you store variables, for example, when you store uh, data sets, for example, in, into variables, this is where you see it. And here is uh, where you see your output as plots, where you see your files, where you see a lot of, uh, a lot of so this is like the viewer of the, of the of the output and here is the text output that, that you get r is is very simple it's a, it's like a graphical it's like a mathematical uh interface and uh, probably i've done this last time it's i mean if i type here one plus one and uh, if, I, if i press enter it will do nothing so i have to come back to one plus one and i say run and i will get the uh, the answer here below so one plus one is equal to two and that's that's uh, an answer that we all, of course, we all know. I can say two uh, to the power of five, and then I say run as well, and two to the power of five is 32. So that's also a number that I know. That, that I know. But um, instead of going and, and clicking on run here, you can also, um, I don't know in Windows, but I think in Windows it will be shift enter. Um, uh, because or control enter because in Mac it's command enter so it, it windows it should be uh, control enter so you click on control enter instead of uh, clicking on, uh, on on run now uh, I'll show you just very rapidly some tips of of, of, of this uh, of this environment I can store everything in in, in variables so I can say uh, yes sir is equal to uh, two to the power of five. Uh, sorry, to the power of five. Okay, control enter. And you realize on the right hand side here, you have a variable. This is the global environment, as I told you before. You have here a variable that is stored in the system that's called Yasser is equal to 32. And I have here Yasser is equal to two, uh, to the power of, uh, of five. Now, afterwards, I can say uh, I'm asking the computer Yasser plus five. What's the value of Yasser plus, plus five? And it will give me a 37. And it, it goes like this. If you've ever worked with uh, Mathematica, or if you have worked with MATLAB before, you will be probably more, I mean, acquainted of, of, those, um, of, of, of those things. I mean, it's simply like any other uh, uh, mathematical or statistical environment. The difference is that in R, there are a lot of statistical um, functions that are defined by default. So if I want to, to do a histogram, for example, in Excel, I will have to do a procedure in order to develop a histogram. Here in R, you just type high, hist, and then give the, uh, the, 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 the variable, and it will, uh, uh, it will draw a histogram. Or um, we have also scatter. And uh, you, you open a parenthesis, you close the parenthesis, and then you put the X and the Y, and then it will, it will draw uh, a scatter plot. Uh, you can draw a bar chart or a bar plot. We call it a bar plot. Okay. 
a bar plot and it it, 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 it it will do it i mean there's a lot i mean there is like hundreds of thousands of functions that are out there that you can use completely directly just you need to know the syntax of those functions and in order to know the syntax of those functions it's quite easy you just go to help here and you just type the name of the function that you want to uh, that you want to use so uh, for example i mean of course it's it's usually um, r um, will 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 remember the last session that you were working with and obviously the last session where i was working with r studio i was working on neural networks which is something that we uh, we will reach out maybe not next time maybe the the, 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 the last session uh, so I was asking, I was inquiring about the neural networks, and it gave me some of the uh, of the syntax of the how to develop neural networks under um, under R. So if I write here uh, bar plot uh, and ask about it, it will it will tell you that there is this, there is that, maybe a, uh, yes bar plot, and this is the usage of the bar plot and how to use it, how to put the syntax. Everything is 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 is, is put here. Over and above in R, there is something that is uh, very um, interesting, and it shows the this uh, nature of being uh, collaborative work and free uh, free software. Um, it's uh, what we call the packages. So um, uh, if you go to the internet and type, uh, for example, uh, R packages, you will find a huge list of. Uh, 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 of packages which you can think of as tools that you can uh, the, 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 that you this is a course actually uh, I didn't go to the right uh, the right place welcome yes I think this is it grant packages yes grant packages by by name so we can see here there's all of those are packages for uh, to be used with R and all of those are very specific I mean if you look into uh, this one it's High dimensional inference with a penalized score test. Why not? Drew's diagram useful for checking latent scales. Scroll down, handling missing values with multivariate data analysis. This is the function or this is the, the package that you need to uh, that you need to work. I would say that almost every every statistical function, every data analysis, every quantitative data analysis function that we use, that we need, that we know, there is a, a package for it. And um, you can install packages and you can activate them. I mean, those are the, the packages that I have installed myself on my computer. It's, it's, uh, all of them are here. And the ones that have a, a check sign are the ones that are actually activated. The others are not the ones that I don't want them now. I don't want them to be activated now, but maybe in the future I will activate one or, one or two of them. So it depends on, on the environment, it depends on what I want to do. And of course, there are specific packages for graphics, specific uh, uh, packages called ggplot2. This is one of the very famous and known packages that are in R that you need also to maybe to download. Now, the way to download or to install a package is the following. You just go to uh, tools and then install package, packages, and just not type the name of the package here. So I'll say ggplot two for example you will find that it's it, it brings you the name and you just install it and um of course it's, it's it says do you, do you want to restart it's uh, uh updating the package i mean it will update the package as well and it will start the r session and and, and everything so now i have it here i have it installed and i i can run it you, you see here it's I mean, my R is, is working, is installing some, downloading something from the internet and installing it on my computer. Now I have it and it is in the right place and it is um, installed. Now uh, I go to ggplot, I check on it to, to make it um, activated. I will click on uh, ggplot2 just to see its contents. So this is the contents. Those are all the functions that are inside this package of uh, uh, ggplot and you have here a lot of functions that are in um, in in here um, the, the, I, I know that it's I mean it, it usually takes a whole course to tell people how to use R but the the, the objective of this uh, uh, of this, uh, uh, this lecture today or this webinar today is just to give you a very brief and, and rapid introduction to this tool 
I hope that you will be uh, that you will download it and that you will work with it. And if you have any questions, just come back and ask me. And of course, there's a lot of uh, information, a lot of resources on the internet, a lot of courses specific for R, and a lot of also free courses and free books that you can download in order to learn this uh, marvelous tool. If, if ever you will be uh, interested to work with data analysis in the future, R is one of the essential tools that you need to uh, that you need to have. Now, let's import the data that I had in, in, in my uh, Excel file, remember this data, and let's try to, uh, uh, to, to, to work with it. And in order to do that, I need to save this file in a, in a place that I know. So I would simply go to, back to Excel and I'll say save as, and I would save this file in, on my desktop. Okay, so it's called Deep Star Data Revision. I would call it only simply Deep Star. Deep Star XLS and save, and it is already on my uh, desktop. Now I go to R, and I need here to uh, uh, import this data set. And you have here different, uh, actually different tools to import the data set. You, can, you have a function called read Excel. Uh, read Excel, yes. Uh, Excel. You can. Uh, Excel S, I think it's, that's the name of the function, or you can do here import data set. You have here a, a function, or you can go to files and browse your, actually this is a, a browser of, of, the, of your computer. So I go here to my, uh, to my browser and I'll go up. Uh, this is my desktop. Desktop should be somewhere here. Yes, this is the desktop, my desktop. Yes. Okay, go ahead, and this is all the files that are on my desktop. And remember, the name of the file was Deepstar. Apparently, the names are sorted in a descending order. So I go to D. Um, uh, yeah, this is the file. So I can uh, uh, simply uh, click on that file, click here, and you have here view file or import data set. It's the same as if I would have. Uh, clicked on import data set here. It's the same if I would have knew the, the, the syntax and I would have written the syntax on the, on the computer. I will go to uh, import data set. Okay, import data set. And here you have uh, a browser. And here it says uh, the name is called DeepStar. And this is, the, this is actually the, the syntax that you need to, uh, to, to write. The first thing that I have here is, um, this uh, actually, it opened the first uh, sheet on the data. So um, remember that my, my, my Excel file here, it had, uh, where is it? Uh, star, I think, uh, yes, this is a deep star. It has three, three sheets. One of them is called field, one of, called this, one of them is called reservoir, and one of them is called well. Now, what, what uh, uh, R did is that it opened the first uh, uh, data, uh, data sheet that I have here. Now, I wanted to, uh, to open actually the other, uh, the, other, uh, the, the other sheet. So I have two, um, two options here. Either to change the syntax, if I know the syntax, and ask it, and ask it to import only or to review the, the the sheet that is called wells, or I can simply just press on cancel here and go back to my Excel and uh, go to deep star and simply delete field. So I delete this uh, sheet. I will delete this sheet and I have only one, uh, one sheet in my file and I'll save it again and I'll go back to R and I will click here on uh, Deep Star. It will ask you the same question. Import data set, and here it will show me the data set that I have in my sheet called uh, uh, well. I'm doing all of this, and I'm going back and forth from Excel to here to back and forth, and, and showing you some problems, showing you some examples, showing you what's, what's happening. Um, actually, I'm doing this on purpose, because I'm trying to show you that data preparation takes a lot of time. And I come back and insist on that. Until now, we didn't do any data analysis. We are only opening files. We are only 
importing our database into the into into the into the software. Maybe you can think of it as we are wasting you. You are wasting our time, or we are wasting our time. Why do we do this? Just give us the the, the right path, and that's it. And I, I I I will I will tell you from from now. This is not what will happen when you start working with real data. When you work with real data, you need to do uh, all of, and probably you will come back afterwards and and do uh, and, and do something else. Now let's look into into this data that is about to be imported into uh, into into R. Now he said that there is a, a, a variable, a variable, a parameter called f name, and it's a character. Okay, yes, it's a character. F a break. If area break, bulk, or whatever, um, it's a character as well. Reservoir, it's a character. Facious, that's uh, also a character. Fluid, that's character. Lease, that's character. Well, that's a character. And then comes this one. This one, for us, for me, I understand it as a date. It's obviously a date, 1998-0301. But R understands this as a double, as a character. So I will tell him, no, it's not. It's actually a date. So you need to, 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 to tell him, you need to specify that this is a date. It's the same for the last period. This is a date. And you will realize here below that it changes the, the, the syntax that you will, uh, the, 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 that you will uh, write your, uh, your, your thing. So last period is a date, first period is a date. Cumulative oil is a double, okay. Uh, this is pi is a double as well. This is a number, a number, a number. All of those are number. I have no problem with this. And then it asks me a very, very, very important question. What is the, uh, the characters that you are using for uh, missing data? Do you have any missing data in your, in, your, uh, in, your, uh, in your data? And if you have any missing data, did you give it any uh, specific character? So I'll go back to Excel in order to look into this problem because I didn't look into it. Did I put anything here in those missing data to signify that it is a missing data or I've just left it blank? So for the moment, I've just left it blank. But I think in one of the files that I was opening, yes, in this file, for example, it was written NA. So NA here means that this is a missing data. So this is where you need, when you work with R, to come back and tell R that my symbol for missing data is NA. I worked uh, at some point of time with a, with a, with a data file, and um, uh, we actually didn't want to put uh, blank in the file because it caused us some, some problems. And we didn't want to put any, um, any characters because it would also uh, destabilize, I would say, the system that we were working with. And the way that we, we came up through, through, uh, across in order to, to signify that there is a missing data was to code it. So we invented, I mean, I invented a code called 9,999. And whenever, whenever there is uh, uh, a missing data, I will replace it by 9,999. And I would just leave it like that. So. I, I mean, the computer later on, or I can understand later on that this is uh, a code that I'm putting for the, uh, for, the, for the missing data. So you can go back now to, to, to R, and I will not tell him anything. I mean, for me, uh, the missing data is missing data. Do you have a maximum number of rows that you would like to take? Is, is, does the first row contain the names? Yes. Um, data viewer is, is here, and the sheet is default. Oh, yeah. I could have done this uh, the last time I chose uh, the field that is called well. And once I'm satisfied with what I see here in front of me, I will just import it. And here, here the last question that it asks me is the name of the variable that, will, uh, that I will use in order to store this data. So um, I will store this data, this whole uh, data set, this whole uh, uh, data matrix. I will store it in uh, a variable called yes, sir. I'm very, uh, I'm very much biased towards my name. Anyway, okay, so I will have a, a variable called yes, sir, that contains everything that is in here. I will say, I'll just click on import, and I will uh, come back to, uh, uh, to, to, to R Studio. And here, 
uh, first, thing, first thing to observe is that on the right hand side here, you have, it tells me that there, there is now in the, the system a variable called Yasser, and it contains 101 observations and 20 variables. So automatically it counted the number of, of the variables. Here is the data that I have. You can go right and left, up and down to look at it. And you have here a sheet, a kind of a sheet like Excel with the name Yasser. And then you have here below, uh, it says that I have imported uh, uh, all of this. I have read the file Excel and I have imported into the variable called Yasser. And uh, uh, I'm issuing you a warning. Take care because there is like 50 or more warnings that I would like to, uh, to tell you about. There's a lot of warnings that I, I, I have here. Probably those warnings will be that there is a lot of missing data here. There is a lot of missing data there. And of course, as he says here, you can use this function, warning, warnings with an S, open parentheses, close parentheses, and type it in order to show you that. Where is the, um, the, the, the file that I was working with? It's here. So this is the one that I have uh, with one plus one. So if I type here warnings, open parentheses, close parentheses, and control enter or command enter on Mac, and it would tell me, you see, you have here a lot of uh, warnings that is giving me. And he says, when, when I read the function, the sheet executing data, it has uh, got on, uh, I mean, it expected something, but it got uh, something different. I will not get into, into, into those details now. Anyway, I have here uh, uh, the names of the variables, or I can go to yes and know the name of the variables. And um, I, have it, I have it here. If I want to, as I, as I said before, I mean, this, is, this was the start. I want to, uh, to draw a histogram for, the, uh, for this variable, peak equivalent equiv uh, RT. So what I will do is that I will say, I will write here the function called hist, and I will open a parenthesis, and um, the data that I'm trying to draw as a histogram is contained in the variable called yasser. And the way to tell uh, R that I'm looking into one of the variables, not everything, suppose that I will, I will, draw, I will do hist yasser. It will tell me I cannot understand because yes, it is not a, a variable. It's not a numerical variable. It's a um, it's a data. So I have to specify the name of the data that I would work to work with, and the way to specify it is to have the, the dollar sign here. So when you put the dollar sign here, it will bring you a pull down menu where you can have all the fields that you have in your uh, in your in your in my data set or in my data matrix. So, for example, I'd like to draw a histogram of peak oil ratio. Okay, I'll just stop here, control, enter, and you have the histogram of this variable that appears here. Maybe it took us a lot of time to learn, to import, to bring the data into, uh, into, uh, into R. Maybe you would have said, well, you know, the time that I have took in order to import the data here and to save it and to manipulate it, it would have been maybe much less time to work in Excel and produce a histogram. Maybe that's true. But remember that you have imported the data now once and you can work with it multiple of times. You can do a lot of, um, a, a lot of data with it. So that's, oh, of course, uh, an advantage. Let's try another variable, variable, hist, and open parentheses, and I would say yes, sir, and dollar sign and um, lease. And it says, I cannot do that. Because lease is not a numerical value. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a, um, I mean, let's look at lease here. So you see here, lease is like a character. It's not a numerical value. So you cannot do that. In order to do that, you have to, converted into, uh, into, uh, into a character. Now let's do um, a scatter plot. Uh, uh, yes, um, dollar sign of what? Cumulative oil, 
comma, caster, dollar sign, cumulative gas, as the one that we've done in, uh, in Excel. Wow, didn't produce anything, and it told me, scatter, I mean, I don't know this function. What is this function? Well, I want to draw a scatter plot. How can I do that? I'll go to help. And in my help, I will write, sorry, I will have a windows open. I'll say here, scatter plot. We have scatter plot that is in function called, there's nothing called scatter plot. Wow. How can I do that? Mm. That's a problem. And um, I don't know, um, I don't know what's the function to do that. Let's go to uh, Google, our friend. So I would say scatter plot in R. Scatter plot in R. And the function is plot. It's simply plot. It's not scatter plot. I mean, I made a mistake. Again, I'm doing this on purpose. I'm showing you how to find the information. Now, I don't know how to, how to, uh, how to do scatter. I thought that it's a scatter and then uh, the name of the variables, but I typed it and it gave me an error and it didn't work. So and I discovered by going to Google and ask Google that the, 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 the answer is plot. So it's simply plot. And I will copy everything that's here. I'll just copy it here. And I have the same graph that is as the graph that I had on um, Excel. Now, uh, if I want to do a bar chart, a bar plot, I can do it this way. If I want, I mean, there is a huge, I mean, large number, very large number of, of functions that you can use in order to produce graphics in, 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 in R. I'll to go back here and, and type bar plot in R. And bar plot in R is called bar plot, and you open and you and you, and you, and you close. And um, of course, if you um, if you click on this link, you will find uh, a lot more information about how to draw a bar plot like this, how to do this, how to do that. I'm I'm really uh, uh, very much interested in showing you how to do such thing and search for it. I mean, this is the way that we learn, that we all learn. We don't do things by the first time. I didn't learn even, even R. I mean, I spent something like two years in order to learn R and to make, to be uh, uh, perfect in it. Or, I mean, I would say uh, definitely less than perfect in it. But I spent like two years learning this tool called R. Now, uh, the way that I did it is that I, I, I made mistakes. I corrected my mistakes. I spent a lot of time preparing my data. I spent a lot of time doing this. I spent a lot of time doing that. And then finally, at the end, you get to uh, um, to find to, to find information. The other tool that 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 uh, that we can use in order to um, to do uh, rapidly, maybe more rapidly than than in our uh, um, graphical data analysis, is Tableau, which is also one of the tools that are uh, that are available. Unfortunately, it's not uh, it's not for free. But if you uh, if you are a student and you have um, an email with a domain name that is called .edu in it, you can have the, uh, the Tableau for free. I mean, this is, uh, this is legal. It's not, um, uh, I mean, you can, you can have this data. And this, I remember, this is, the, this is the, the tool that I used last time in order to show you the analysis of, the, uh, of your data. Now, let's import the same data of, um, of this file DeepStar and try to, uh, to, to work with it. So when you open Tableau, you have like connect. I go to uh, uh, Microsoft Excel and my file is on desktop. On the desktop, it's called DeepStar. Open it. And it will show me now um, a preview of my data with some uh, questions. So it understands that this is um, um, a date, that this is also uh, last production, I will have to tell that it is also a date. I can describe it. I can change it to be uh, to be uh, to, to be a date. I have to click here and say it's date and time. 
actually. So this is date and time, this is date and time, and so on. And then a uh, tableau is much simpler. Uh, if I would like to draw, uh, 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 what was it? The, um, the oil and the gas, okay. Cumulative oil and cumulative gas. And it's not the sum, it's uh, a dimension, and this is also a dimension. And you have uh, maybe this, maybe not the same because it's it's inverted. And yeah, yes, I mean this is the graph that we had in Excel here in Tableau that we had in R here uh, down below. So it's the same graph done uh, using uh, three different tools. You can have it in Excel. You can have it in Tableau, and you can, of course, have it in, uh, in R. Well, every software has, or every tool has its own advantages and disadvantages. I would not advise you to use uh, Excel for uh, graphical data analysis. Simple graphs, pie chart, scatter plots, yes. But whenever you go outside this uh, circle of uh, doing simple graphs, you want to do something more uh, into deep, you definitely need uh, a different tool, you definitely need more, uh, more uh, um, powerful tool. And I will here advise R as, um, well, for me at least it's simple because you write syntax and, and you produce things. Maybe you need to, to memorize the syntax in your, uh, in your head, but it's free. While on the other hand, if you have uh, Tableau or if you have access to Tableau, you can also do a lot of, a lot of things with Tableau. It's more beautiful, I would say. You can produce uh, uh, much prettier uh, graphs in very uh, less time. And uh, the result, as you see here, is the same. I mean, here this graph or that graph or the graph that we had in Excel. Where was it? Oops. Oh, yes, we, we, we erased it, actually. I can, if I can. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. No, I'm not able to, uh, to come back to it. But anyway, it was the same graph. Uh, we had uh, some points, let go to Tableau. We had some points here, and then we had uh, uh, an outlier here. And uh, maybe here in, in, in Tableau, we can identify this point, or maybe in, in R, we can identify this point. But at the end of the day, the result is, is the same, is that we have data. We need to draw this data on a, on a, on a vertical and horizontal axis and see how this data is being uh, distributed. And I'm sure that you as mining engineers, or sorry, as a petroleum engineer, as a geological engineer, as people who are, let's say, professional in, in, in petroleum engineering or pet petroleum production, you can have a lot of um, meanings for those data. I mean, when you see a point like this, for me, it's only a point where you have cumulative oil and cumulative gas, that's it. But when, definitely when you see a point like this, you have a different reason, you have a different way to reason about it. And this is what makes it uh, uh, um, a collaborative work. I mean, as I said at the very first uh, lecture, a guy like me will have a data, will analyze it, will pro produce a lot of uh, outputs. But you as a, as a content specialist, as someone who understands this domain, you will come back and tell me, no, this doesn't make sense. Oh, yes. You know what? It makes sense. You know what? This is new. You know what? This is something unusual that we didn't see before. And this information, I will not get. I personally, I will not get it, but you will be able to get it. So this is the, the, the link, I would say, between someone who's working in data analysis, like myself, and someone who's working in a specific domain. And as I said at the, at the, at the beginning, I worked with people in petroleum engineering. I worked with people in financial stock markets. I worked with people in health sector. And all the time I was producing information, I was producing graphs like this, and I would leave it up to the uh, specialist in the, in the feed to tell me what does it mean. And this is what makes it uh, why, I mean, this is to answer the question, why is it important for um, a petroleum engineer to learn data analysis? Because if you will learn data analysis, you will not, when you will understand the data more than someone who didn't, uh, uh, learn anything about, um, uh, uh, about data analysis. Now, um, uh, what I will ask you to do, as, as last time I asked you to go to the internet and search for 
distribution, statistical distribution, maybe mean and median and mode and, and so on. I will ask you also to do the same uh, this time. Please go to the internet, please download R, please download R Studio, please try to do some basic statistics with it. I mean, you can, I mean, like, we can go to back to R and say mean of the variable that is called yes, sir, uh, string, uh, community voice. Yes. What's the mean of that variable? The mean of that variable and the mean value for the uh, for the community of oil is 4.108795. What's the mean for uh, uh, community of gas? It's 7.5. Physically, what does that mean? I mean, does it have a physical mean? Does it have something, does that signify something? That the mean here is seven and the mean here is four? Does it mean anything for you physically? I mean, forget about data, forget about me, forget about yes, forget about anything. Just you as a, as a domain uh, person, does it mean something to you? This is what we are actually uh, interested in. There is a huge library of graphs that we can do with this data. And I can show you uh, box and whiskers uh, graph, uh, bar plot, box plot, uh, graphic plot, uh, sorry, uh, daisy plots, uh, circular plots, uh, a lot of those plots. But if I don't understand the data, if you don't tell me what to do, if you don't tell me what you expect, this is where I, um, I, will, I, I, I will fail. And as, you, as you've seen, now it took us something like 10, 15 minutes to prepare the data, while it take us like one second to, 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 to type mean, yes sir, com oil, and then control enter, and then voila, we have the data, we have the answer, and uh, uh, that's it. So, again, what I will ask you to do this time is to go to the internet, download R, download R Studio, try to get access to Tableau, if you have an email, I mean, I presume that most of you are uh, uh, doing uh, studies and you have uh, your official email from your school or your university, so you have a .edu uh, domain email, so you can have, you can ask for, uh, I mean, usually when you download Tableau, it will give you like 14 days of trial period, um, and during those 14 days, you can uh, claim your uh, free, uh, free copy, so please do that and uh, try to analyze any type of data that you have that you can see in your and you, and you, at your school, at your, um, or uh, even at home, or grab something from the internet and try to, uh, to, to play with it. And um, I will see you the next time with uh, more of uh, descriptive analysis of data, how to describe the data, how to, I mean, how this, how this 20 variables, can we, we can describe them or we can analyze them, all of them at once. How can we do that? So this is, this is something that we will discuss uh, next uh, Tuesday when we uh, when we come back, it's beyond the the hour and three minutes now that, that um, since we've started, and I will stop here and I will see you next um, Tuesday. Fatima. Okay. Okay. So thank you so much, Dr. Yasser, for this amazing lecture. Uh, and now we have to move uh, to questions. So the first question. Um, what is your opinion in JMP statistical software? JMP statistical software? What's that? J JMP. So JMP has an abbreviation of something. Statistical okay, let's software. Let's search for it. Okay. So this is a GMP software from SAS. Um, well, well, okay. This is maybe the 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 the. the Suite of computer statistical analysis we developed a GMP business in SAS Institute. Okay, well, it's um, well any any statistical uh, analysis tool that you can have that you can put your hands on will definitely have the same will well more or less will produce the same graphics. You can have uh, uh, you can get the same output from it. Now um, there is SPSS, uh, there is SAD, there is Stata. I used to to, uh, to use a software called the Statistica. It's now purchased by Dell. You know, there is a mini tab as well. I mean, if you go to the internet and you will ask for statistical software, you will find like fifty of them. 
that are existing in the world. And all of them will produce more or less the same thing. But what, what I like actually about R is that it's free. I mean, you can download it uh, uh, at home. Maybe someone has an access to this JMP, but maybe somebody else doesn't have an access to it. Or maybe you have an access to it at work, but then if you'd like to work with it at home, then you you. I, I don't have a specific opinion on it, but I would say it's it's the same like any other statistical software. Okay, thank you. Uh, the second question is, what makes R Studio better in using than Excel, which also has statistical features to use? Well, the statistical features in Excel are very much limited. Uh, there's like 10, 15 uh, uh, statistical features. Uh, tools or statistical, uh, yeah, statistical functions. In R, you have something like a hundred of thousands of statistical functions that you, can, that you can do. I mean, in Excel, you, I mean, as, as I said before, in order to fabricate a histogram in Excel, you need to uh, install an add-on and then you go and then you do this and then and that and so on. But here, it's just a one line of functions. So, and when we, when we will move on for the next, uh, uh, for the next sessions, you will see that uh, there are things that are done in R that definitely you cannot do in, in, in Excel, or you will spend like a year in order to program Excel to do it. So they are completely different tools. Uh huh. Okay. Thank you. And uh, there is so many questions about if you can share the Excel sheets so uh, students can uh, uh. do application. Like use these tables. Well, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, I cannot because those are are, are Excel sheets for uh, data fields or or wells and, and sorry or of oil fields and wells that I've worked on, and I don't have a permission from the the, the owner of the study to reveal those uh, those data to to give those data to anyone. I'm just using them for illustrative purpose, but but you can of course. Uh, I mean, um, I didn't try this before, but maybe we can try it here. Uh, we can type here uh, data set about oil and gas. I'm sure that you see oil and gas Kegel, oil and gas data sets and machine learning for machine learning projects. 328 data sets available, oil and data, uh, oil data in the, on, on data in the world. I mean, there's a lot of data that are uh, on, on the internet. You just go and, and try to find it. It's so easy. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Yasser. So, guys, if you fail to catch up with our Zoom meeting, you can watch it on our YouTube channel, by Petro. And uh, please hurry up in joining our Google Classroom if you have not joined so far. Uh, you will only be notified of the quizzes and final exam once you join the Google Classroom. Cl classroom. The link to Classroom is available on our Facebook page, Arab Oil and Gas Academy. So again, thank you, Dr. Yasser Shayeb. It was an amazing session, and I'm sure everyone has learned a lot from this highly informative and interesting webinar. Hope you guys enjoyed this session. Please stay safe and see you again. Thank you very much and see you on Tuesday, inshallah.